So I'll be showing you how to dual boot Manjaro Linux along with Windows 10. This tutorial is applicable to Manjaro Linux as well as many other Linux, mostly Arch Linux based distributions that make use of the Calamares installer. OK, let's begin. First things first, we need an ISO image of the Manjaro Linux. Get it from their official website at manjaro.org. At the downloads page we get many choices, the best part of Linux. We can choose the desktop environment we need. If you are new to Linux desktops, start with GNOME or KDE. They are quite popular and useful as it is. The XFCE desktop is quite good and less resource intensive, so basically your call. In addition, we can get community builds of different other desktops as well. Select the desktop Linux and click on download. The download will be around 2 GB. Once that is done, We'll start off the installation process. With the ISO file downloaded, we now need to create a bootable device. There are many ways of doing so. Following steps should work fine for most of you. Visit www.rufus.ie and download the executable program. Once the download is complete, open the application and load the download Manjaro ISO image. Linux users can use Etcher, Disk Utility or Terminal to do the same. Creating a bootable device may take a while. This is same as copying the content inside the ISO image to a USB stick. Once this process is complete, we are ready to install Manjaro Linux alongside our Windows installation. Linux users can use a terminal to create a bootable device. Identify the USB device with the following command. Unmount the device using the appropriate device name. Now using the dd command, we can create a bootable USB. Now reboot your PC to the BIOS menu or boot manager. Pressing F2 or F12 or Dell should work on most systems. In your BIOS settings, go to the boot manager slash boot sequence editor. Some BIOS provide an option to rearrange the bootable devices. In this case, move up your bootable USB to the top of the list. Once the USB is loaded, we will be greeted by this menu. If you have a graphics card, choose the non-free version, else go with the default settings. Once the Manjaro Linux boots up, we can see the Manjaro installer application. Launch the installer. Choose your location. I'm going to choose my location here. On the next page, we need to set up our keyboard layout. Select your layout and check if all your keys work as expected. In the Partitions page, we need to set up the disk for installing Manjaro. Since I am dual booting Manjaro along with the Windows 10, half of my disk is already allotted to Windows 10. Race Disk option will clear all the data in Windows 10 from the system and install Manjaro on a clean disk. You don't want to be doing this unless you have a new system. We will be using Manual Partitioning option. This is applicable if you have to dual boot or if you want to clean install. As you can see, I have around 25 GB of free space available. If you don't have this, you can clear some of the disk space already being used by some other drive. In such cases do this to shrink the disk size and create new partition for installing Manjaro. This way we now have enough disk space to start installation. The first partition we need to create is for the base installation. This is called a root partition. This will include all the applications, system related packages, etc. Leave at least 20 GB for this. Select the file system. If you don't know what this does, go with the ext4 option. The ext4 is a great file system. Though there are many other similar file systems, the ext4 should do fine for all PC. Set the mount point as root or a forward slash. The next partition to be created is the boot partition. This is as important as the root. This partition will be used to load the Manjaro Linux and other installed OS on this machine. Leave at least 300 MB. Some new Linux systems recommend 500 MB, and this should be more than sufficient. The file system must be FAT32 and the mount point must be set as slash bool slash effie. We also need to set two flags for this partition to let the BIOS know these are bootable. In other versions of this installer, you would find an ESP flag instead of BIOS grub. 
The thing to remember is these two are essentially the same. And now finally, allocate some swap space for ROS. Swap space size depends on your requirement. This is an optional partition. You can skip this step as well. My recommendation is to use half the size of your RAM as swap space. You can understand better about what this does by googling swap hibernate in Linux. These are the basic requirements for installing Manjaro. It would be good thing to have separate partitions for different system mount points. For example, having a separate home partition will keep your personal data safe if you ever remove the Manjaro installation or replace it with some other Linux. We can apply similar separate OINF partitions on different mount points. Just make sure you understand the Linux file system workings on a basic level before going forward. Next, we need to set up a user for the system. Enter all the details and password. You can choose to enable auto login and set the same password as your root password. If you are not familiar, a root user is like an administrator with elevated privileges. With the partitions and user configurations ready, we will get a quick summary of what we did and what will happen once the installation is done. And that's it. The only thing remaining to do is wait. Once the installation completes, reboot the system. This will bring up the Manjaro boot up screen. You will be able to choose Manjaro Linux or your Windows installation from this menu. If for some reason Windows doesn't show up here, go to the Manjaro Linux, open up a terminal, and run sudo update grub. That's it. Share your Manjaro Linux experience down in the comments. Share and prosper. Thanks for watching.